Hey everyone, it's Jackie from Vegan Yak Attack and I'm back with a brand new video for you today. And today's recipe is for a slow cooker seitan roast. And I figured the timing was perfect. Uh, this serves four people or you could just have a couple leftovers. So it's, um, you know, kind of the just the right amount for maybe the holidays we're having this season, right? Smaller groups and stuff. And you can customize, you know, based on what you have on hand. So like the vegetables and stuff, those can be easily switched around. It'll still be really delicious. This recipe is from my second cookbook, Vegan Yak Attack on the Go. Uh, it's in the bulk section right at the back. And um, this book came out in 2018. So now it's a couple years old, which is great. But this recipe I love, the seitan is great, um, and you'll see just how easy it is to make seitan yourself at home. Plus, if you have the book, it is on page 153. Okay, so you can just reference that, but I'll have the full recipe and instructions in the link in my description below. And you may have noticed I have a new appliance in here. <laughs> it is a, an air fryer, oven, proofer, um, just like everything in one and I just got it, it's on sale. Uh, so I'm gonna be using that actually a little bit for finishing the recipe, which is totally optional. Um, it's not a part that you need to do, but it's just like a preference thing if you want. Um, so I'll leave a link for that. That's an affiliate link. It's like, that's $40 off or something right now, maybe more. Um, and so far I love it, but I'm gonna do a whole review video on it. I think I'm gonna put out next week for you because a lot of people on my Instagram were super curious about it. Now, let's dive into this seitan roast. Um, if you don't know what seitan is, it's a vegan protein made out of vital wheat gluten, which is the protein that comes from gluten. And uh, it's, it's already used in baking. You can find it pretty much anywhere, uh, honestly, in the flours aisle. Um, but because it's so high in protein and really stretchy, it makes for a really nice like vegan meat sub. So that's what we have here is our uh, vital wheat gluten. Now we'll add in some tapioca starch or flour and that gives it a little bit of uh, uh, elasticity but not chewy. It kind of breaks up the texture a little bit. Then we have some nutritional yeast of course. And here are our seasonings. So I have some uh, salt-free poultry seasoning which is just an herb blend essentially. Uh, some ground pepper, some smoked paprika for a little meatiness, right? And then some garlic powder. And we'll just whisk that together until it's combined. Like that, very easy. Now we have some vegetable broth. You can also use like vegan chicken broth or vegan beef broth if you want. Um, either way, it's all gonna be delicious. And we'll add our tamari to that. And then we have some olive oil and tomato paste. And the tomato paste gives it a little umami as well. <laughs> I'm just splashing over here. Okay. Now we'll whisk this up just until combined. All right, and now we will add this wet mixture to the dry. And if you want this to be soy free, like you're avoiding tamari, you can use um, coconut aminos. You'll just probably have to add a little salt because it's not that salty. Um, and now we're gonna need this for a couple minutes, right? Um, and then otherwise you could just use salt instead of tamari, but you'll probably just need another two tablespoons of vegetable broth added to the mixture for liquid. So with seitan, I like to stir it together first because it soaks up the liquid super quickly. And then once it turns into this like blob thing, look at that. Now we're going to knead it for a couple minutes. Just really develop that gluten. And it may seem a bit wet, um, but when it cooks, it'll have this really nice texture. And the way I use this recipe in the book, aside from in the slow cooker roast, is actually for slicing up for like deli meat for sandwiches. So you're more than welcome to do that either with the leftovers or just do that period, you know, whatever you want. But um, that's what I use it for in that cookbook. And I've mentioned this 
before with all the other baking stuff. Um, you can totally use a dough hook and a mixer, a stand mixer for this, um, but I'm finding this very nice right now. <laughs> okay, so you see the gluten is hydrating. It's becoming really stretchy. You get this kind of like um, Freddy Krueger texture over it. I might not ever look at Satan the same again after saying that. <laughs> but you see, you know, what's happening here. And so that'll give us nice, a nice Satan texture in the final product. So now we have some cheesecloth and this will be essential because you want the water that's cooking it to like the vegetable broth and stuff that I have over here to actually permeate the outside. So you don't want to like wrap it in foil or something. Um, but cheesecloth works great here. So we'll use this and I need my kitchen twine. So basically what we're going to do is uh, wrap this pretty tightly and then create a Tootsie Roll candy shape type of deal. So just put this here. You want it like in an, in an oval loaf roast shape, right? So oblong. Here we go. And then you want to like wrap it taut. It doesn't need to be the tightest like you would sushi, but you want it taut because it will expand while it's cooking. Um, yeah, so this will give it a little give while it's like expanding. Okay, here we go. Then we can take our kitchen twine. And then just like tie it. it, you know, you don't need to like double knot it. You can just do it like you would a shoe. Ta-da! <laughs> it's like a little present. Um, and also in the book, it shows you a way to make it in the pressure cooker. So if you want to do that instead of doing a slow cooker, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, either way, it's pretty idle after this point. So now um, I'm just using my Instant Pot as a slow cooker. Um, that's why I love it, because I can use it for like a million different things. Uh, but you can just use a regular slow cooker as long as it has like temperature settings on it. So here we go. I have the inner pot. I'm actually going to add, we have a mixture of half vegetable broth or like I said, chicken or uh, vegan beef broth, whatever, and then half water here. And then we're adding a little bit more tamari as well. Now we will add in our little roast, so cute. And I have a bunch of vegetables here that we're just gonna throw in. The order here doesn't really matter, so I'm just gonna start with, I have some like very coarsely chopped onion, yellow onion, white, brown, that's honestly, it'll be all good, whatever you got, onions tasty. Then I have some uh, little baby potatoes. I also, it says finger lean potatoes on the ingredients. So that would be like kind of longer, small baby potatoes. Um, but as long as they're small, and if you don't have baby potatoes, you can just quarter like a larger potato um, and it'll cook pretty much the same. So we'll just plop those in there. Then I have some large chopped carrots. And you want them large because they will cook through. And if they're small, I think they'll just kind of dissolve after a while, they'll cook too quickly. Um, you're welcome to like chop it into a smaller piece after it's cooked. And then uh, in the recipe, I call for fresh shiitake mushrooms, but I don't have that right now. So I'm going to use some dried shiitake mushrooms um, and just pop them in there. Um, you know, you can, I, the taste is gonna be great, um, but if you have just whatever mushrooms you have, like button mushrooms, or if you have a portobello, you could like chop it up a little bit. Um, but really we just want some mushrooms for again, a little bit more like meatiness, umami flavor. And now I'll add in some fresh herbs. We have a few sprigs of rosemary and a few sprigs of thyme. Yum, yum, yum. 
So like if you even wanted to substitute the carrots with like sweet potatoes or something like that, or um, the potatoes for Brussels sprouts that are like chopped in half, go for it. Like, like I said, it's gonna be delicious no matter what. Um, so now we can put this back into our slow cooker. And once I find the lid for this, which may be in a sink, we're going to set that at um, like low, medium temperature and cook it. You cook it for four to six hours. Basically, once the seitan becomes um, nice and firm, uh, but it has like a little give, that's when it's ready. You don't want it to be like too squishy. So four to six hours is a good guide. I'll see you then. And we are back. It's been a few hours. Um, the seitan is nice and firm, so go ahead and grab that. I've opened this up and um, taken off the lid, turned off the heat to let it cool for probably like 15 minutes before I handle it because otherwise it's very hot. Um, and I do want to broil it a little bit in here to get some browning on top, I think. So here is our very unsexy <laughs> seitan loaf with its uh, cooked veggies and everything. Really nice. Smells incredible. The kitchen smells so good. Um, so from here, we're going to take it out of this and put it on this pan. If you are not planning on browning anything, you can just take it out, um, you know, take the cheesecloth off and put it on whatever platter you're gonna be serving it on. In this case, I'm just gonna unwrap it on here and I'm actually gonna grab a bowl. For the cheesecloth. So, I do wanna show you that you see when I poke the seitan is quite firm. Um, like I flipped this halfway, uh, halfway through cooking, I flipped this over and uh, I could tell that, you know, it still was so, so soft. So you'll definitely be able to tell that it's nice and firm uh, when it's done. Now it's really hot, as you can see it's steaming. And I'm going to try to carefully undo these strings, there we go. All right, now, here's the seam and I'm just gonna pull this and let it unravel, get this <laughs> time out of here. <laughs> so now, whoop. Like I said, if you don't plan on browning this at all, you'll just, you know, plop this, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit heavy. So you'll plan, you know, put this on a platter, whatever you're gonna have it on. We're done with that. So in the book, when it's not a roast, you'd actually refrigerate this for a couple hours and then you could slice it for deli meat because once it's cooler, it's uh, even more firm and way easier to slice thinly. So in this case, I'm gonna take, you know, some of these potatoes, some of these carrots, um, the broth and tamari that's left over in here, you can reserve to use as a soup base. Um, I don't really, you know, so you, you can even eat this as a soup, I guess, if you want to just chop everything up and put it back in the broth. Um, I've not had it that way, but you don't need the broth part anymore. So I like to just like freeze it in a container and put it, you know, put it in the freezer for the next time that I make soup. And knowing that the tamari's in there, you know, just adjust the se seasonings accordingly. So it's a really nice, like, low waste soup. You can discard the the herbs, though. They're they're played now. And um, this, like I said, is going into my uh, part convection oven, part air fryer, part oven, part toaster thing. <laughs> so. Um, this is the pan that actually came with it. It's nine by 13. So, you know, whatever baking sheet you have will work if you are, like I said, putting it in the oven to crisp up a little bit. You could even put maybe like a little maple glaze. Like, should I, should I drizzle a little maple on this? Maybe, I think I will, I think I will. Try something a little new here with y'all today. This side is probably looking better than the other side. 
Almost missed a piece of carrot. Okay. So now, I think, mmm, smells so good. I think I am gonna put a little maple on this. Just a touch, you know, a little sweet, savory. Okay, I'm gonna spray a little oil on these veggies. Oh, ooh, so fine, that mist. Now you should probably use a brush for this. I'm just gonna <laughs> use my finger, because <laughs> let's be real, I'm the only one eating this thing. Not that it's, you know, it's good. I should just say my significant other is not a huge fan of like faux meats and stuff. So it's just us two in the house. All right, and now, oh, the broiler is ready. I'm going to score just a little crisscrossy pattern in here. Hopefully it does what I want it to do. I'm not gonna stick any cloves. I think that might be a little overkill in this situation. All right, so I'm gonna boil, or boil it. I'm going to broil this for a few minutes just to get it um, a little brown, get some cooked edges on some of these veggies, and then it'll be ready. I've broiled this for a few minutes, um, and for an electric bro broiler, it actually worked pretty well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and grab this. Ooh, a little smoky. I'm gonna have to turn on the fan in a second. There's all those veggie juices. Hopefully I don't set off my smoke alarm. So I've also put together an actual like maple glaze kind of thing. Um, just maple syrup, a little oil, some smoked paprika, and uh, some pepper. So I'm gonna brush that over the top since obviously the broiler dried this out a bit. I think it gives it a nice like Sexy sheen, maybe. Mmm, mm hmm. That's looking good. And the flavor will just be subtle. And like I said, this is totally optional. You could have been done like five steps ago if you were just like, I'm going to eat the roast right out of the slow cooker. And you might be a smarter person than I. I don't know. But you know, it's fun to play, play with food, especially, you know, recipes that are a few years old for me that I don't get to revisit all that often. So the link for this book, for Vegan Yak Attack on the Go, is in the description below, uh, or you can buy a signed copy on my website under the books tab, um, or the shop link under the books tab, rather. Wow! And then these look nice, uh, now that they're roasted with a little bit of oil. I am going to transfer this now to a little platter um, so it looks a little bit cuter and then we can slice her open and you can see what the inside is like. All right, I've plattered her up. Um, looks, smells so, so good. So, got my cutlery here. Let's take a slice. So, I should say, I like serving this, like if it's a roast, I like like a half inch slice. You know, deli uh, meat slices is obviously gonna be a little different. Ooh, this is like a little bit more than that, but let's take a thinner one here so you can kind of see what we're working with. You see that nice steam? Obviously this would be great with a gravy. So this, is what we're working with here texture wise. You know, you got this nice, it's not too soft and it's definitely not uh, like spongy. Like if you boil seitan, it, it, it gets spongy and squishy and kind of gross. This is nice, it's got a nice density, but still is not too dense. So this is, looks pretty warm, but let me see if I can take a little chunk out of here. It cuts so nicely. See the nice little spices in here. Even though I'm the only one eating this, I'll still, you know, use a fork. Mmm. I'm so glad that I added that maple glaze. It's subtle. 
I'm sorry to be chewing like this. It's subtle, but it's really nice when you first bite in. So I'm definitely going to add that to the recipe, you know, as an option on the website to so the link below. It's really good, meaty, you know. Um, and some people complain that seitan can be chewy, um, kind of like you're just like chewing and chewing and chewing when you're eating it. This, because of that tapioca starch and the nutritional yeast, I really like the texture. Um, it's really good. And I had a couple bites of these like onions. The onions, since they're small, they're nice and buttery and soft. I mean, potatoes are potatoes. One thing though that I would recommend is on these vegetables, as soon as they're done, like you pull them out of the liquid, just uh, sprinkle a little like salt on them because it needs just a little bit of salt and like pepper. Otherwise, it has some of that tamari, the vegetable broth that it cooked in. Um, so there is some flavoring there. Overall, I think that this is a solid option for y'all for this upcoming holiday uh, season. And um, like I said, you can find the recipe link in the description below. You can support your local vegan author and buy the book through the link in my description as well. Or like I said, I sign, I sell signed copies on my website. Um, they make a great gift. If you want to gift it to somebody, I can sign it and write a little note to them personalized. So if you enjoyed this video and you like this recipe, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss the next video. See you later.